Hey everybody, it's Amy Graham, the Badass Valkyrie, and it is Monday, September 28th, and it is the 40th week of 2020. We have uh, 12, I'm like, we have 42 more weeks. No, no we don't. We have 12 more weeks of this wonderfully exciting year to go. And then we hit 2021, uh, which, you know, I, I am both hesitant and elated to welcome that new year in. However, I am also trying to make the best of what's remaining of 2020 and uh, get through it as best as we can. Um, today's focus for the Finding 52 Challenge is making time for what you love. And that can be pretty much anything, but actually scheduling out time and figuring out a time to do what you love is very important. And whether that is taking time to, you know, write in your planners, update your planners, open the big amazing box of 2021 planners that you have that just arrived today. I can smell the Hobonichi from here. Anyway, I don't get to open this for another six hours. So till then, it's just going to be my office mate today. Um, but taking time or scheduling time to do what you love is very important. Uh, this past weekend, I ran a 10K. It was Run the Blurch, and it's based off of the Blurch uh, cartoon done by The Oatmeal. And it's one of my favorite uh, cartoons uh, done or comics that have been done about running. And I will actually link it down below because every time I get down on running, which is something that I do love to do. Two years ago, I could have never gotten those words out of my mouth with a straight face, but I actually do love it. And uh, part of what got me to there and when I was having so many problems and not thinking this was going to be something that I was going to ever do in my lifetime. The oatmeal and the blurch got me through. Now, this has been the first time that I've ever actually been able to run one of the races because it was held virtually this year because of the pandemic. Otherwise, I would have had to travel all the way up to Seattle to do it. And there were, I, I've had it scheduled or in my schedule and things have always happened where I couldn't go or I've had to, you know, delete that particular weekend um, due to having to fight other weekends and that sort of thing. But this year they did a, uh, a virtual race and it was held between the 24th and the 28th of September and I was able to get it done. Very happy that I got it done. But I also had to schedule it into my schedule and I had to prepare for it because running a 10K... <laughs> which is 6.24 miles is not the same as running two and a half miles every day, like I've been doing, uh, or even running four miles like I've done on the past couple of Sundays. And Sundays is usually my longer run. And uh, yesterday was an extensively longer run. Uh, the, the, the difference was only two miles, but... That is a huge difference for someone like me, who is a heavier racer or a runner, who is a runner with chronic injury, and who, even though I've been steadily doing a run every day, extending that uh, longer than I'm used to can put some definite hazards on my body. So I had to schedule it into my, my plan for my Sunday and even my Saturday. Uh, I have been working my way up. The, for the past two weeks, I've been using the Galloway Method, uh, which is a run 
walk, run method. And um, it has helped increase my pace. It's helped reduce the stress that's on my body, all of that. But it's also something that I had to take into consideration because this is, this is a longer race than I was normally doing. Now I could have done a 5k. That would have been super easy because I was used to doing a 5k every Sunday. Um, and then I'd upped it to a four miles. And so a 5k is 3.10 miles. Um, but I felt like I wanted to do uh, the next step, which is the 10k. And I still may end up doing, well, I know that I have another 10K scheduled in October, so it should happen in two weeks. And I still may do a half marathon, which is 13.1 miles on Halloween, which is also my anniversary, which is um, on a Saturday. And I will have several other things scheduled. Don't know if I'm going to get that done or not but it would also be a virtual race. So we will see. But scheduling things that you love into your schedule takes effort. It also takes time to figure out what you wanna do. You know, the whole thing about this particular challenge, the Finding 52 challenge, started because I wanted to include an hour a week for just me. And sorry, if I, I put my elbow, I have you guys up on a little stand. And so if I put my elbow on my desk, it kind of shakes you. So I, I apologize for that. I'm trying not to do that. Um, finding 52 started because I wanted to find an hour every week to, to focus on self-care. And a lot of times that meant figuring out something that I could do during my time frame, during my schedule, uh, to get that hour done because I wanted it to be an hour block or more for self-care, not 20 minutes here, 10 minutes there, 15 minutes here. I wanted it to be a continuous hour that I needed to schedule somewhere in my, my weekly block of work, life, home life, everything where I could focus simply on self-care. Being at home, working from home, it's kind of a never ending day <laughs> for me. And I'm sure it's like that for a lot of you who are still working from home. Uh, my schedule is nothing like what it was when I was actually commuting to the office. I, I had very little time that was my own because I had to work I had to do a 40, 40 minute commute to and from work. I had eight hours of working. I had to sometimes do events in the evenings and plan for that. And then getting work done and such for my channel, my everything involved here. I also, in, you know, had to get done as well in a particular day's schedule. And so finding time here and there has been much easier since I've been home because I can take, you know, an hour or I can take 30 minutes or I can take, you know, what I need to get done and break it up into weird little chunks. But I'm also feeling like I've got to get laundry done. I've got to make the bed. I've got to fold clothes. I've got to clean the living room. I've got to vacuum. I've got to do lawn or dishes. You know, it's so much of these little tiny things that I have to get done. And because I am at home, sitting in my lovely, beautiful sunroom, which I love. It all just kind of clusters together. And if I don't take time and schedule it out and figure out what I want to include first, then it can, the day can just get away from me and I lose it. Um, one of the prime examples is my pell work, which is me taking my sword out to my backyard. And there is a, for all intents and purposes, a stick man tied to my tree that I actually practice on. He's my practice dummy. And part of my progression this month 
has been that I wanted to do what we call pell work every day. I've done it maybe half the time this month because I have not been consciously scheduling that into my daily schedule and write, literally write, writing it down into my, into my daily schedule and it's gone by the wayside. I have not gotten it done daily, not even, you know, every day during a week yet. And so this week I am trying to prioritize that and hopefully have it go into the month of April, month of April. Oh my God, <laughs> month of October. <laughs> yes, this is the 13th month of April that we have been going through now. No, I, I'm trying to get that done in the month of August. Honestly, I know it's September 28th. I just said it. My brain has no clue what month we're in, evidently. <laughs> in the month of October, <laughs> I would like to get that done daily. And so that's one of my goals. Uh, I also am going to start a new run challenge. Uh, I am going to be doing the Run for Ruth. And uh, it is going to be an 87-mile 87, 87 um duration run, not all at once. No, uh, 87 miles between October 1st and November 3rd, which is election day. <sighs> I am doing that to, uh, honor Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And it is just something that I want to do. Uh, I'm actually going to sign up for the run for Ruth, uh, so that there's like a medal and a t-shirt and all of that. But, um, those are the dates that I'm choosing to do the run or doing the 87 miles is uh, October 1st to November 3rd. So ending on election day. But I need to schedule that in and I also need to, to know how many miles per, per day I'm going to have to do to get to reach that um, milestone. And so I'm gonna have to kind of do that adjustment. But everything that I want to get done in a day doesn't necessarily get done. And sometimes things that could be put off, like laundry or, you know, vacuuming and things like that, I want to say, while it doesn't take precedence over, oh my goodness, while it doesn't take precedence over um, things that I love, sometimes I have to get it done because it's just got to get done. And I've had it on my list for like three weeks. And I'm like, okay, the cats are starting to play with the fluff balls that are on the, on the carpet. You know, there comes a time when you've got to kind of balance that out. But if I can schedule things out and make sure that the things that I love to do and want to do for myself, my sanity, my love of all things, whatever, planner related, pet related, whatever you want to do, get put in first. Then I can work the let's do laundry here. Let's vacuum the living room here. Let's do this here. So making time for the things I love, I have to put first. Now, obviously work and all of that comes first first. But once I have my work schedule put in, then I put the things that I truly love in next. Because if I don't, it gets my schedule gets filled up with stuff that is kind of superfluous. That I'm like, okay, I, I could do this, I could do that, I could do this, I could do that, you know, gaming or whatever. But... If I have it in my schedule, just like running, just like my morning meditation, just like my morning pages, just like my evening reflection, that kind of thing. If I can keep that in my schedule, then it makes it much easier for me to work that stuff in daily or weekly. And as I was going back, trying to make sure that what I was going to start talking about in, in my different Hobonichi posts and things to show you how I've been doing 
uh, certain things in like my weeks and in my Hobonichi Kezenevac. I was like, oh, what, what did I do for self-care? I know I did something. I did something, right? Mm, maybe I didn't. And it's kind of interesting since this is my challenge that I created. And I'm like, seriously, there are weeks that you've actually missed doing self-care because you didn't put it in your schedule. Yes, yes, there actually are weeks that I've missed because I did not put it in my schedule. And things got so chaotic that I didn't get it done. It happens to the best of us, even the people that create these damn challenges. <laughs> so going forward for the next 12 weeks, I am going to make sure that the things that I love the things that are important to me, like self-care, planning, all of that are included into my schedule before anything else gets in there. Because I need to know that I am taking care of me. And the things that I want to be sure are in my weekly schedule. So, that is the focus for this week, is making time for what you love. And it could be, you know, finding two hours that you just sit and hang out with your husband or your spouse or your significant other. Um, it could be taking, you know, time with your child or your fur baby or whatever and making sure that it gets scheduled into your schedule. Now, that doesn't mean that it can't change, but if every day at noon you go outside and you beat the heck out of your Pell guy for 15 minutes, great. That means that every day at noon, I know where I'm going to be. I know what's going to be on my schedule. I know not to schedule other things over that. Or if I do, I know that I need to move whatever that is, my Pell time, sometime else later in the day. And I need to adjust my schedule. So, Making time for what you love is supremely important. Making time for self-care is very, very important as well. You need to take care of you before you can take care of anybody else. And in the days of the pandemic, with everybody being home, everybody having their own schedule, everybody being thrown into all these different chaotic things going on and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't do this because I have this and I have that and I have this and everybody else needs something from me. Taking time for yourself, making sure that what you love is in your schedule as well as everything else that's going on in your world is supremely important. So make time for what you love regardless of what it is, even if it's taking 15 minutes and having a perfectly amazing cup of coffee or having that cup of coffee with a friend via Zoom, whatever it is, make time for it because it's important, not only for your well-being and your health, but your mindfulness, your, your everything. It is important for you to make time for what you love. Because time is the one thing we can't get back. You know, yesterday is done. There's no way I can go back and go, oh, but I meant to do this. Can I get a do-over? No, there's no do-overs. So make sure that your schedule has time for something that you love. That's the focus for this week. And uh, I'm going to be making time for this big bad boy later on today. Uh, even though I had something else scheduled for tonight, I did not realize this was coming today. And at 10 o'clock this morning, ding dong, I'm like, oh, <gasps> much more animated than that, as most of you probably know. But at least I have six hours to come off of this high. <laughs> and hopefully it's not so ratcheted up as it was a few years ago when I was like, ah! But, you know, who am I kidding? I'll probably still scream in excitement, especially for a couple of those things. 
Anyway, <sighs> time to get back through work. Still have to go for my run, all of that. So, making time for things that you love. That's the focus. I hope you all have had a wonderful weekend and are looking forward to a great week. We have October 1st coming and October 1st also has the uh, full moon. You also have a full moon on October 31st. And so it's, it's very exciting for me. I love having the start of the month and the end of the month bookend by full moons. I think that's awesome. Also my, you know, wedding anniversary and Halloween. So it's a very good month for me. It's one of my favorite months of the year. And I am looking forward to everything and scheduling it all in. So uh, as always, spend the rest of your life celebrating because it is worth every minute and making sure every minute is scheduled that you want is a good idea. And I will talk to you soon.